Hello everyone, good day to you all. It is always, as I've said many times, a great pleasure to come and talk with you, um, to share ideas and uh, be a part of your wellness because it's just, it's great to see all of you getting your, your life back. Uh, some of you are struggling uh, and keep, keep plowing that field, keep going, doesn't matter. You know what the goal is, you know how to get it, you know what's up, and you just have to work it. You know, some, some, some of us come in here with a little more genetically weakened bodies or a lot more lymphatic problems, and so sometimes we have to work through things. Uh, it is common to have chronic level stages right now. Uh, man is in the chronic and uh, in the degenerative stages. So uh, even, even the young, in the teens and 20s, they are facing chronic issues at, at such a young age. And I thought about this 40-some years ago, that this uh, probably was going to happen. But uh, as the years came on, I, I kept realizing more and more as our clients became younger and more involved, um, the genetic uh, issues that we face and this whole understanding of how consciousness is uh, um, replicated through genetics, so to speak, and how it's um, affected um, its flow and its uh, expression, you know. And so it really boils down to toxemia and weaknesses. And you can correct both of these things. It doesn't matter what your diagnosis is. A diagnosis of a disease is a diagnosis of, a, uh, of nothing. Because diseases do not exist. You have to understand these are man-made concepts out of a set of symptoms. And each of these symptoms that make up whatever disease you've been diagnosed with is simply a part of your body that has been broken down by acids or inflamed because the lymph is backed up. Anywhere you're genetically weakened, you will see these areas and feel these areas first in your life. And these are the areas that break down first on you. So that's why I say the simplicity of the whole thing is clean and strengthen out the human body. In doing that in a physical level, it will then reach into your etheric emotional body called the astral body. That will clean up uh, the mental body because all these different compartments, all these different realms, all these different bodies... All these different areas that you deal with simultaneously along with the human body uh, has to be cleaned up as well. And you're the powerhouse of them all. The soul carries all these bodies. And to finally get to a level this inert, you have to have protection. Soul couldn't be here. You can't be here in your grandest so you have to use a body that is equivalent to the chemistry or physics or magnetics of the level you're at. And that's just simply understanding basic chemistry here. And even if you didn't know a basic acid and base, uh, it's easy to determine what species the human body looks similar to. It's easy to understand that primates are a predominantly frugivore species. Yeah, you can argue some of them are stuck on islands and different places where they have to become omnivores. You can argue about the chimpanzee group that uh, broke loose after a hurricane on this island and now they eat each other. <laughs> Cannibalism. But it shows you what man's done to this species, what man's done to himself. And... Uh, Stepping back away from it, uh, you know, this is a pretty archaic planet uh, in the consciousness and everything else. We, we, you know, man still seems to kill each other, and very few animals do that. Uh, they do, some, but very few kill each other, like we do. We, we, we just don't have any consciousness at some levels, you know. Anyway, I want to continue down this line of questions and answers and, and try to catch up here while Chris is away. The mice will play and see if I can halfway catch up on you guys because I'd love to do that. I've got uh, another two hours I think I'm going to do before I close this one down. So I'll give you about six hours maybe, maybe eight hours if you want. And uh, hopefully we'll break them up in sections and it'll be more helpful. 
But when I'm on a run, I got to run. You know, I just got to grab and do. So appreciate you being uh, patient with me and and uh, uh, working with me and getting to your questions. You know, it's a lot of them here. All right, here. Sending love your way to all. You know, I love that, Karen. Thank you, Karen Rankin. Appreciate that much. I've been doing lots of grape juice fasting lately. Yeah, go you is right, man. This is just incredible. So five gold stars today, Karen. I keep seeing bright, bright yellow leave my body through the GI tract after my first jar of grape juice. Wow. <laughs> I'm thinking this is sulfur. I'm thinking this is sulfur too. No other, nothing else comes like that. You'll have the, sometimes you'll have the smell of that. You'll have the gas of it. It's sulfur. I mean, it's just what it is. So that's pretty dang good. Uh, I've been thinking this, is, even though my eyes don't show much sulfur, but you know, that's a good point, is do we have sulfur in there that the eyes don't show? I couldn't couldn't speak to that, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, our, our awareness of all this is extremely limited in terms of what we see. I'm not sure other iridologists identify orange as sulfur in the eye. I, it's just my own personal thing. I've witnessed this in, for years. And so, uh, do you think this could be bile and not sulfur? No. Mm -mm. Uh, I so um, uh, I so curious. It happens every time I set back up on the grape juice, even if I'm going for from orange juice to grape juice. Well, it's interesting that you see that just on grape juice. I think uh, you know I'm a lover of fresh squeezed navel orange juice, of course. But the power of the grape, and this just shows the power of the grape is pulling something out of you. When you see bright, bright yellow like that, that's not a color of anything that I know of in the human body. You know, uh, bile is much darker. So, I I don't know. I uh, I my take is what your take is, Karen. I think it's sulfur, and I think you did a dang good job, sweetheart. This was uh, given to me, this is uh, an individual down in Costa Rica, and uh, this individual's getting a lot of these out. I wanted to know if they were tissue. He was getting parts of an organ or gland out of him. And uh, it looks like tissue, but these sort of things can become polyps and things like this in the bowel and it just simply cleaning these polyps out of them. And all that this uh, individual's getting out is quite a bit, uh, up to 20 of these a day. If you had degeneration where you were losing tissue, uh, let me tell you, you would feel it. You know, you're going to have pain associated with atrophy and decay. Uh, these are common to get these mucus plugs or, or little polyps, things like this, out, you know, of your body. The fact that this gentleman is doing really well on the diet and all this, he can expect to see uh, all kinds of gnarly stuff like pieces of tissue looking stuff out, uh, mucus oriented. But it does uh, scare people sometimes when they see stuff like this coming out of them. And I've seen things that look like this, this big. You know, I mean, we've seen a lot of just nasty, gnarly stuff. It's enough to say it looked like it was growing in him, and now that he's detoxing the body, he's discharging them and letting it out. That would be my take on this. And uh, I will give this back, and they can communicate that to the uh, gentleman there. You, your body doesn't get rid of what it, what it, what it wants. You've got to realize that healthy tissue is revered. So healthy tissue is kept by the human body. Uh, well known that things that are weak, including muscles that were put on with high protein diets, you're going to wave goodbye to those babies. Um, I, I, I get bodybuilders in here, you know, Mr. Olympia type. I, I remember this gentleman asked me the question, but I get them in here that's a little too late. Uh, one guy, 29 inch, I think here, uh, major, uh, he was on a lot of magazines and things, and uh, of course, his elbows got out to here, and uh, wrists got out to here, you know. And I mean, when you get older and you look back on it, the question, was that worth it? You know, because the amount of work it takes to take this uh, 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 mutated joints and get them back is a lot of work. Uh, I... I I think it takes a raw food diet for at least a year 
to see this. Now, I know some of you out there uh, uh, have been able to see your limbs straighten much quicker, which was kind of nice, you know, I love that. But in reality, you want to explain on a year. But when you think about it, I have some uh, clients that are pretty crippled and pretty distorted, you know, and uh, it's just going to take a while for the body to rebuild this. And a watch pot never boils. So don't, you know, don't always every day watch your things. You know, let, let, let energy flow. Don't block with over-concern. And one of the things that's easy to get, especially when you have pain and stuff, is too much body consciousness where every little thing freaks you out and you're worried about this or worried about that movement. I got so much so that I literally felt my blood moving through my body and sensitive on the raw. And I just totally worked myself out. I didn't care anymore about the body. I broke loose from that. And I uh, felt so much better than focusing on every little ache and pain and things like that because, pff, you know, it's just a human body. You don't want it to control your consciousness and awareness. Pain has a funny way of doing it, doesn't it? And so... Uh, um, I respect pain and what it's telling you and what you have to do to get rid of it, for sure. You know? Hi, Dr. Morris. I follow your advice based on your ingenious YouTube channel. Thanks. I appreciate that. You are a wonderful blessing. Oh, thanks. I hope you can help me out a bit. Yeah, sure. I'm a 29-year-old female that suffered two ectopic uh, pregnancies in last uh, in less than a year. The first one ended in surgery. Oh, wow, for the room I left, that's what I say. You lost your fallopian tube, didn't you? Damn. Uh, the second was in my right, oh, which was treated with, oh, wow, metal, metal trexate injection. It messed my, yeah, I bet it did. Messed my adrenals up so badly that my BP was going from high to very low in minutes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a bummer. Very scary. It is very scary because when it hits the low, that's your breathing and your heart. And especially your breathing. And then when you struggle to take a deep breath, that's not fun either. So uh, I see where you were very scared about that. Uh, I had to stop working to focus on healing. Probably a good idea. I still have my right tube that I want to heal and restore my uh, fertility. Well, you know, I would say this. Uh, I've got a good female reproductive formula, and I'd spend a couple of months with that baby. It'll perk up your pituitary, it'll strengthen the ovaries, it'll strengthen the tubes, it'll strengthen the uterus. Now, at the same time, I would definitely want to get my kidneys and adrenals in line, and this is where you might have to go to, say, a 400 milligram um, uh, glandular there just to help bring that uh, adrenal up and wake it up a little bit and try to get that uh, more neurotransmitters and your steroids in line. And by making all these glands healthy, you're going to strengthen tubes and everything else. Now, with that said, I want you to think about the parathyroid gland. Look at your fingernails. Do you have spider veins, varicose veins? Do you bruise easy? Uh, do you fracture easy? You know, like knees and hips and, and ankles and things like that. Uh, you want to uh, maybe spend some time, one or two bottles of the parathyroid uh, glandular with maybe the bones form, excuse me, bones formula to help strengthen the body up like that. Uh, but be one way I go. Just start cleaning and strengthening, cleaning and strengthening, cleaning and strengthening, and, to and strengthening is toning as well. And strengthening connective tissues and all the all these things. I probably wouldn't hurt to do a douche for a couple of weeks with the Hill All Tea. That's why I created that tea. Uh, douching with that Hill All Tea can really clean the canal and to strengthen the vaginal walls. Just just to keep all that area from uh, deteriorating or having you know atypical cells and things. I have a okay. So here's another. I have a goiter which seems to be going down my all raw high fruit veg and diet. Yeah, it will, and it'll go away. But you you really want to get your kidneys filtering because pull this goiter out of you. But what it's showing you, uh, sweetheart, is your lymph system. You know, and how backed up you are, and you're backed up up in the head area and up here in the thyroid. I wouldn't probably touch the uh, parathyroid or thyroid until I got the goiter out of there. Um, it's just a tumor, easy to get out. Uh, just get yourself filtering. Stay high on the fruit. Do your little grape fast, lemon juice fast. Get this goiter all gone. Goiters are, are just like tumors. They're not difficult to get out of there. And goiters in particular are not difficult. And just, just no matter what they say, 
You don't worry about the antigens, the antibodies. You don't worry about anything like that. Thyroid storm. Just go for the lymph system, and you'll see this all go away. I've done thousands of them, thousands of them. Um, I juice veggies and green tea, too. Well, you know, with this goiter here, I would probably just get way up on my fruits, do my lemon juice fast and my grape fast, and get that out of there, and now you're, you're good, you know. And then you can get in, you can uplift that thyroid and parathyroid. Just getting this out will clean out the thyroid. Because remember, all the congestion you get in your sinuses, you're going to get in your thyroid and parathyroid gland. So that's why detoxification. The body literally gets full of mucus and all the organs and glands and everywhere else and then full of acids and stuff and this is what affects the functionability of these tissues. So if you want a good functioning thyroid or a good functioning ovaries or whatever, you have to make healthy. Well, what definitely affects every cell in the body? What are the two major constituents that affect every cell and the health of those cells? Kitchen, bathroom, blood, lymph. Uh, it's, it's that way in all life. It's, it's so simplistic that it's scary that in the intellectual fields they overlook it. Something so basic and essential because that's the foundation of understanding health is that you have a nutritional, and we can argue about nutrition, which we do all day long. But then we have to come over and look at the bathroom. How does the body get rid of the waste that's from the burning of this chemistry? You know, the byproducts of this chemistry. How do we get rid of it? You know, and that's, that's key to understand. And the medical thought on that is, is ridiculous, if not antiquated. You, uh, you just have to trace that out. My PSH is very high, and my TSH is 2.2. Uh, I often feel pressure on the top. Of, uh, see, I don't like that. She often feels pressure on the top of her head that is very frustrating and keeps me from functioning. Yeah, now this is, a, this is where we started getting into some serious stuff, sweetheart. Uh, you want to really get this goiter and get this bowel cleaned up, get your kidneys filtering, because this will lead you, you're only 29, and this is going to lead you into dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, something like that, maybe in the future, uh, deteriorated retinas, uh, all kinds of nasty stuff that's not worth it. Losing your hair, going bald as a woman. No, you don't want to, and you you don't want any pressure like that up there in the head. That that nothing ever good comes with that kind of stuff. And uh, getting tumors up there is common now. So you got one here. You want to get all this gone, and 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 we're good. And it's not difficult. You know, you're on a good focus already. Just keep that going. Keep pounding that. My spleen feels a bit enlarged, and I see some uh, suspicious moles on my skin. So. You know that the fluid we're talking about that deals with, with the sewage of the cells, this is where all the inflammation is. This is where all the tumors and polyps are. This is, this is the system that is, is at the top of all medical thinking in terms of diseases. This is the system. And uh, when you're backed up here, you're also backed up in the bowel wall, in the wall of the spleen, in the wall of the liver, in the wall, they're all just brothers and sisters hanging around just different parts of branches off of a tree, simplistically speaking. And so uh, when you look at it simplistically, you, you're empowered to deal with it. And that's why you always want to keep it that way. The mind always wants to take you out of that. Remember, the mind is what loses your freedom. Your mind is the greatest instrument for the loss of your freedom that exists. And people that play in the mind, look at Obama. He's just an intellectual geek. So, he, he, you know, he doesn't know how to do anything. He's too intellectual. No common sense. And that's the problem, is that we, we get an intellectual, and then we get into theories, and then we start ruining everybody's life because we have a theory about life. And it's like, no. Like Judge Napolitano just was talking about, you know, the Constitution. We're here for the freedom. We have all rights on your body. On your body. So it would be frustrating to me. It would be obvious to, that you could have some inflammation in the spleen and liver and things like that. But you just keep detoxing, get those kidneys filtering, and it'll affect every part of your body, heart, lungs. Because remember, those are tissues too, and they get backed up lymphatically too. Um, the moles, if you got a gnarly looking mole, take parasite in until your moles fall off. But that tells you that your adrenal glands are weak 
and you have faulty sugar metabolism from that, which would be representative of low cortisol, no matter what your blood work shows. So in that time, you could have blood sugar problems, like hypo, low blood sugar for a while, then flip up the other way. All these things come about with your problems. High blood pressure comes in with the kidneys and adrenals, all this sort of thing like this. So you you got enough seriousness here, honey, you want to get this out. Uh, this is very important. The female will correct itself, especially if you use the female reproductive along with everything else. Uh, I'll say this, right now, don't try to have another baby. Take some time, take some time, because if not, you're going to have a baby with some real serious uh, adrenals and kidneys, and that's what's going on out there. And you don't want to have a baby that has lymphatic problems, because guess who gets them? Not you, the state. The state will end up getting your child, and there's nothing you can do, and most of the time they kill them. You know, so you just, uh, just got to get uh, uh, be careful with that. Uh, we don't have children yet and are really yearning for parenthood. Well, just take a little more time, strengthen everything up, get the goiters out, get the lymph moon, get the kidneys filtering, any weakness, and get a picture of your eyes and look at them. We've got a how to take a picture on the YouTube. It's simple. You do it with your cell phone and uh, really go after your health there. Saria, oh, yeah, some love piece to you. Uh, but... Spend some time going after your health and get this goiter out of there. That's number one, because you'll tumor up, uh, and you, you you don't want to tumor up any more than you already are. Let's get that out of there, and then you're good. I take goiters very seriously. Okay. This is from Jake. Hello, Dr. Morris. You're one of my main mentors. Oh, thanks, Jake. Appreciate that, buddy. Love you too, man. Uh, for sure, and I appreciate you. Oh, thanks so much. We have been in touch a few times previously uh, pertaining to some uh, severe neurological disturbances of mine. I am contacting you today in regards to two health concerns which I strongly desire to reach the cores of. All right, let's take a look at them. All right, Jake, an, uh, an absolutely excruciating and gnawing like pain in the center of the abdomen that almost always is triggered by eating my favorite food. Watermelon. Yeah, you know, what's funny is watermelon is aggressive. There's no question about it. It's red in color. That's an aggressive color, so it gives you a, a sense right off that's an aggressive food. And what that's telling you, if you're right here in the middle, uh, that's your small bowels. And it's possible that you have, uh, you know, obviously inflammation in that area. You might have a prolapsing. Uh, you might have a pocketed area. You might have a spastic area. And that that strength of that melon create a little spasticity. Sometimes these foods trigger our weaknesses. You know, there's just not, nothing you can do about it. It just tells you you're weak. What you can do, though, Jay, get a picture of your eyes. And look, on your, look around the pupil where the small bowel and colons are and see if you can see. Because this wouldn't be the colon unless it's just down below the stomach up here. Then it would be your transverse colon. It's a common place to have all kinds of gnarly problems. But if it's further down toward the belly button or so, that's into the small bowels. And uh, you can have small bowel problems as you can have colon problems. We're just used to thinking colon, but the small bowels can get pretty ridiculous as well. So, again, I would probably go with the stomach and bowel number one. Uh, if you're having enough stools, one a day at least, then do number one, or heal all T capsules, that's what I would do, and uh, start healing this up. Uh, stay away from the watermelon, you know, it's my favorite food too, or one of them, uh, if I could get a good one. Uh, but it, it's, uh, it, it does bring on that. You know, whenever I'd have dental work, I'd be sucking down the watermelon, it'd make the pain hurt even more. And I knew it was just the, the, the strength of that melon. The pain is easy. The uh, the pain is easily the worst of my life. Uh, averages out to last about ooh fifteen minutes. Another thing you could do is we have an antispasmodic because it sounds like what it does is spasming, which which means that you have a big weakness there. Probably genetics means the nervous system's weak there, and you have a lymph backup, so you have a lot of acidosis and easy to spasm. So, but so you could use that antispasmatic for that sort of problem because it's a, it's a spasm I'm sure going on uh, he has me rolling on the floor nearly in tears and drains drains me to exhaust by the time it goes away 
it is so epic to where I sometimes feel to be most in the, wow, well, that's not good. I don't like any of that. So uh, you could do some castor oil or uh, coconut oil packs on that. Uh, you could increase the ingestion of coconut uh, uh, water or oil a little bit to give you some buffer with that as an anti-inflammatory. At the same time, you might want to stay away from the citrus level and go to the subacid level, which is more your grapes and your apples and things that tend to soothe a little better. You know, the more stringent, the more aggressive. It's just the way it, the way it is. Lemons are real aggressive. I'm amazed that you feel it with watermelon, but you don't with lemons or so. I have been challenged by this pain two to three times per day due to the eating only organic watermelons. Well, I take away from them. I, I, I know I get a craving like that, and I just dig in. But you might want to take a little break, fix this a little bit, you know, switch to grapes or something. You can eat cherries, things like that. Work that out for a couple of months, and then go or a month, and go back to your watermelons. Once the pain subsides, I am free to eat the rest of the melon with no issues. Yeah, you get it with spasm. Now, you could you could use an anti-spasm. <coughs> Excuse me. You could eat. <coughs> oh, man. I've been talking a lot lately. You could... Uh, you could eat. Uh, you could use an antispasmodic and 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 hold that spasm, and then uh, go ahead with your watermelon. It should work with that, but it does show you've got a little bit of a problem there. And I would use some herbs to help take care of it. To be honest with you, they're faster. They're more specific, and I would work that way. Might be a good idea to get your eyes and look at your bowels a little bit. You could have some serious stuff going on there. I've had this pain in a much more mild form from eating other foods as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, there's definitely an issue with you there. And you just have to look at the eyes to get a good look at where that is and what's going on. How you fix it's always going to be the same, though. I'll tell you, because I would shift to, like I say, it, you could even go with a heal all tea and sip that heal all tea throughout the day. Uh, I recently noticed that to an extent of exposing my torso to the summer sun, it breaks out in hundreds to thousands of very teeny blister pull and acting like bumps. Well, I have to tell you, what it tells you right off is your lymph system's a mess, bro. And you've got to get uh, control of this and get this detox because it's just simply acid on acid. And you're seeing the expression of that. Because the sun is acidic. And, of course, if you weren't acidic, your skin would be beautiful. You wouldn't have those pimples and, and the redness and stuff like that. It's just simply acid on top of acid, kind of like chemo. <laughs> uh, but uh, it just shows you that you have a lot of lymph issues you've got going here subcutaneously, right under the skin, right under the top layer. So you really want to get your kidneys filtering. And because of this other the other issue has to be fixed too. And remember, all issues start with, except for trauma, you know, can be pointed right to the lymphatic system and right to the site of chemistry we call acids. I mean, the finger can go that side almost every time. There's other, there's alkalosis and things like that, but not as a general rule. Uh, and it's full of clear liquid. Yeah, that's lymph. Uh, this also, interstitial perhaps, this also was accompanied by red rashes around them once. I noticed them mostly on my lower stomach and lower back, but there also were a few coming out of my inner biceps. See, this is systemic. Always systemic, meaning it's all through you. So you'll see patches all over the freaking place. Oh, what I was going to say earlier is take Parasite M for this lady. Take Parasite M along so these moles fall off. Because if you take it long enough for a couple of months, most of your moles should fall off. If you have a suspicious mole that looks a little gnarly, we have, there's a product called Can-X, C-A-N-X. And it's a little black salve. Pull those things right off. Uh, let's see. Sometimes it takes only 30 minutes of sunlight exposure. Yep. They completely disappear after about one to two hours being out of the sun. Yeah, it's all acid on top of acid, my friend. But thanks for all these questions and stuff. But that 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 definitely sounds like a spastic area there. And so different foods cause you spasms, 
particularly the healthy foods, you know, because they're they're initiating response in those tissues. You know, it's funny. You can do cooked foods and things like this, and you just don't know you have problems. People have asked me that before. You can go for years, and on the outside, you look beautiful. And on the inside, you're getting gnarly. You're getting really chewed up and all kinds of problems. And then suddenly it starts showing. You say, well, what's happened? I've been healthy all my life. That is such a cop out, but it, it, it's just it's just a lack of, of of being informed properly by those that know. But I don't know how many of those that really know all that. After a while, you wonder whether it's a conspiracy or they just friggin' are unconscious. Thank God you guys decided to be conscious. All right, uh, this is another one, uh, Teresa. Remember, you got a lower member number than I do. You got 241. How are you guys getting those lower member numbers and I got stuck with a higher one? Hi there. Love you, Doc. Love you too, honey. Uh, have to get out here there first because I think you... Oh, thanks, sweetheart. I appreciate it, honey. I know that you have touched on the causes of Alzheimer's in your videos at times, but I was wondering if you could do a segment that we could send people to that... I have family suffering from Alzheimer's dementia and may want to help them. You know, I ought to do a separate video on them. I'll touch on it a little bit here, but uh, I, I definitely should do one. I'll say this. Uh, the video we have on MS and neurological problems, I think we got one. <laughs> uh, that would be the one. Because you, you, that's, you're, you're going you're gonna to think neurological. And there's so much problems with these two issues here. Uh, I have a cousin with Alzheimer's, and she is fading fast. That's sad. Her daughter is open to helping her if possible, and I cannot find any of your info that addresses it in any way that explains it, and what has contributed to it, and ways to start moving the limp. I, and you just answered your own question. Uh, I know she was weak uh, kidneys because they have already reported that the kidneys are problematic. No kidding. <laughs> you know, I mean, and this is what you're going to see all the time. By the time they see it, you guys will well have fixed it. Because these guys don't, you know, I, I have many cases where their blood work comes in here, their lab tagged high in creatinine and not a word from the MD to the client. I've got several cases like that right now. And one guy went back and said, we finally was having potassium problems. And I said, I told you your kidneys were going down. And now, I said, now she'll talk to you about your kidneys. And damn if she didn't say, you, you're having kidney problems. Well, no kidding, honey. She was ha He was having kidney problems years ago, and the lab has been taking it for you. You haven't been listening. And that's the problem with a lot of medical doctors. In and out, baby. And then they get uh, they get you know in their ways, and it's like no, we're in healthcare. We we're into helping people get well. So we look at numbers to help you understand where you're at on that scale and what you got to do. It helps you to understand that we're not just pulling this concepts out of the hat. The labs are showing it. Your symptomology showing it. Your eyes are showing it. It's all correlated for you. That's the only reason I even mess with this stuff, because really none of it's really needed. You're going to take everybody to Wellville, and those that you can't either can't do it or they're, they're, there's time to leave the planet. So you don't have to know any of this stuff. That's how simplistic it is. But shouldn't it be? There shouldn't be a healthcare system like this. The only reason we should have hospitals... And unfortunately, somebody, since no one is honest anymore, it seems like, they need to be regulated or something for these unreal costs. But uh, I blame the hospitals more than anything for wrecking their own system, be that as it may. But surgery is always essential, and so is emergency rooms. So these two things are essential allopathic focuses, and some are really good at it. So, but but healthcare is not an allopathic focus. Never never will be. Never should be. That's naturopathic and homeopathic. It's not even even homeopathic as much as it is naturopathic. And naturopathic is true healthcare. Unfortunately, we have a whole world of naturopath that doesn't know that. Sad, sad, sad stuff. Oh, okay, so they told her she had weak kidneys. Of course, you know the adrenals, GI tract and lymph, but I am family, and it would be believed better if coming from you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I know how family is. Yeah, I know. 
Mine are all under the ground because I know how they are. Well, at least their bodies are underground. They long left. They'd... My cousin is a is in a nursing home. Holy crap! So it would have to be an herbal tinctures, and I don't know if her diet could be changed. I just want to help so bad. I know you do. You got a good heart, you guys. But you guys are the healers. That's why you're on this site, not just to help yourselves. You'll find that most of you that come here and take this on, you have a much, God has a much bigger plan for you, and uh, a good one too. Well, you know when you look at any condition, I don't care what it is, you have to understand a couple of things, and that is the simplicity of how the body's designed. You can get into the uh, the in-depthness of that. Uh, but then you you'll lose everybody because e even even current A and P is not always correct. Remember, there's there's this frustration about their ignorance of kidney filtration, and even they've lost the channel from the villi of the small bowel to the liver for lipid ingestion. They 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 think it's going the same highway as your your acids from your cells. And, and that, that becomes a, a ignorance after a while because I've told you that even A&P professors that have called me said, boy, I knew it was impossible, and it is. You, uh, you have to understand there, we live in a world of matter, energy, space, and time. And matter is geared between two poles of creating magnetism. And you've got what one could say positive or negative, yin and yang. We got every name in the world for each of those poles. Uh, God and the devil, we got everything out there we call these two poles. But there's simply duality that the one God has to use to have creation. As an infinite being, it has no form. So to create form, it has to have two poles. It has to have duality. So there is movement, there's electricity, there's all these things. Outside of that, it's just pure consciousness. And that's what you tap in the present moment. Because in the moment, there's no time. And it's hard to understand that. Time is in sequences of thought. So when you get into that present moment, you can touch Start touching that allness. That's when everything starts coming in and you start seeing everybody as from the one source. Everything becomes one as opposed to the many. And it's just the way God has to play the, the illusion of, 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 of creation, of the drama, of the soap operas. Because what's life just hanging and being? So there, there's many reasons for this, but it's enough to say that when you have a problem physically, you only have two fluids and cells to look at, and you only have two sides of chemistry. Now, in this crux of two sides of chemistry, we have all we have created all types of chemical elements, or not elements, but well, there was a chemist in here that said he thought there was man-made elements, and that's probably true. You know, the two new elements they found is possibility they're man-made. Uh, but, you know, when you're, when you're playing with chemistry and making compounds and things, uh, we don't always know what we're creating or the, the side effects of, of mutating chemistry in the allness of chemistry. Because it's the same, it's a similar thought as busting the atom. You know, the universe is supported as being full uh, atomically that everything is atoms, and that to break down atoms would create a void, which would create an implosion. So in physics, that was the concern of busting too many atoms, is creating a void and then creating, you know, some serious, serious stuff anatomically. So, it's enough to say that, keep it simple. Whether you're dealing with MS, you're dealing with Alzheimer's, you're dealing with dementia, you're dealing with cancers, you're dealing with whatever. What side of chemistry breaks down the cells of the human body? Because you can go to specific cells, whether it's the autonomic nervous system, which comes into the cerebellum, wraps around through the optic nerves to the eyes, cuts down to the stomach where the brain is, and then to the adrenal glands and everywhere else. Then you have the central nervous system, the hard drive. 
anything that breaks down these cells is going to affect some level of cognizance, some level of activity, some level of, of stability, all depending the area of the brain or the or which nervous system, blah, 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 blah. But be rest assured, there's only two sides of chemistry that you can blame for this. Because if you look through the eyes of chemistry in this world, the science of chemistry, there's only two sides to it. You've got base, alkaline, female. You've got acid, corrosive, and male. And you have these two sides. This is a female planet, a dominant female planet ran by men. So as acids become more aggressive and, and more dominant, it shuts down the females. Well, in doing that, death occurs. Death occurs. And whether it's a death of cells or the death of the individual bodies or whatever, acids cannot rule a sustainable planet because they're corrosive in nature. So most expressions of inflammation is simply acidosis, whether from proteins or whatever, byproducts of the cribs, byproducts of, 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 of the metabolisms and, and ionization and respirations and all, all, all the activity levels that goes on in chemistry always yields acids as the end products. The end products of life is always acids because acids is that breaking that stage down and taking it down, like fermentation and fungus. You know, there's these, these, these end stages, birth, life, and death. And some people think we can get healthy eating death or foods going toward death. I find that just equivalent to most people's state of consciousness here. Oh, very high. And so that's why we're here to help. Come on, let's get our heads out of the death side and go to this regeneration life side. Because you can play on either side you want. Both sides are always eternal, always here, and, and you can play with either side. You're going to get burnt on one side real bad. And that's the lymphatic or the, the uh, acid side. Now, there's two systems in your body that deal with these two sides of chemistry predominantly. The blood does carry acids, but has to do it within balance with a dominant of base chemistry. When that dominance of base or alkaline chemistry of the blood is changed, you're pretty much dead. So you can't be messing with the chemistry that's going into the body. And the problem is we're eating foods that chemistry does not match the blood chemistry. Therefore, the blood is always being affected, whether it has to seek calcium out of its walls to, to balance blood pHs and things, and therefore we see spider veins and varicose veins, things like that, or we see bruising easy, petechia, where the capillary walls have gotten so thin, uh, because we're leaching calcium, or, 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 or you know, they'll grab sodium eventually, or chloride, or something to bring itself into balance, because we're eating unbalanced foods. Fruits, berries, melons, and salads are the only balanced foods for homo sapiens, and salads are not really for homo sapiens. Those are for more herbivores. Your horses, your cows, your elephants, your giraffes, things like this. They have the design. They have the anatomical and physiological design and capability of dealing with these high fibrous foods. We simply fit right with the primates into the fruits, the berries, and the melons. And those are the only level of foods that you can get out of Alzheimer's, dementia, MS, Parkinson's, Lou Gehrig's, quads, paraplegics. That high level of energy and nutrition is the only level that you can get. And if you've got a mama in a nursing home or someone in a nursing home, good luck. This is a tough place to be. I've pulled them out of nursing homes before, but I'm telling you, you've got to get the MD that does the nursing home on your board. You've got to get the, uh, the, uh, the individual that's over the nursing home that, that manages it. You've got to get them on board. You've got to tell a, a dietitian to take a hike because you're going to supply the foods. That's how dramatic this is, because they're not going to give them all fruit. If you can work that out, may the blessings be. And then you want to give them herbs. And, and the two formulas that are essential for anything like Alzheimer's dementia is upper circulation. Now, why is that? 
We want to move the base side, the healing side of chemistry, we want to move it more aggressively because it does carry oxygen and all the goodies. So we want to move it more aggressively into the brain, right? We want to move more oxygenated blood into these tissues, right? Absolutely. But what's the cause? What system? It's not something flying around from Moose Jaw, Alaska that has an Alzheimer's name on it. This is just a name for a set of symptoms like I forgot and uh, here I'm putting the ice cream in where the plates are. I took care of my grandmother for a couple of years with Alzheimer's. It was it was a trip. But you have this has to be an all fruit diet. It's going to take you a year. When you get advanced Alzheimer's or dementia, you've got some serious breakdown of the brain. So, but how do you fix the cause of this problem? Upper circuit brain and nerve, number two, those will impact the cells, get more oxygenated blood, help to bring things up a little bit. But you've got to remove that which is breaking down neural tissue. And that's always acids and that's always the lymphatic system. So you've got to go back and fix their kidneys, their adrenals. You've got to get their kidneys filtering, get their adrenals up, and start cleaning this massive, massive sewer system in the human body, which is three to four times bigger than the blood system. This is a huge deal. And when you get to the point where you forgot where you parked your car, you're in big trouble because you got some work to back yourself up and get this brain regenerated. And that is very doable, but not on any other food source but fruits, berries, and melons. You will reach a plateau way before you even see any improvement if you add vegetables. So these people that are dealing with Alzheimer's dementia need to live on the food that's designed for their bodies, which God designed the human body pretty close to the primates, and these are considered frugivores. The human being is considered a tropical species by National Geographic, myself, and many others that, that can, can have a scientific brain. So this is, this is important to get to these people and get earlier on before they have these problems. So you've got to open up all the pathways of blood, nerve, and lymph. Those are the three energetic pathways of the human body. So to get blood moving faster, you can use formulas to do that, <clears throat> but fix the lymph system because the lymph system is actually what slows down the blood system. So it's a trip, and you have to be determined, and the person with it, you have to help them because it is tough because they don't always remember. And if they're living alone, good luck. Or most of them don't live alone, but they have a caregiver like a, a husband, which is elderly, or a wife that's is elderly. And it's, I've got all, all levels of this here. And it's just sad to see, especially when you have two elderly people where one has to take care of the other when they're losing their lifetime partner, and it's very difficult for them to do that. And then you're introducing an elderly person to an all-fruit diet. I'm just saying, as a rule, as a rule, uh, that's difficult. That's really difficult because uh, especially the males, as you get up in these uh, upper ages, uh, I'll eat what I want and I'll die the way I want. Now, we have higher consciousness males that are older, no question. But I'm in Florida, senior citizen city. And uh, this is, uh, you know, a serious problem that we have here. Upper circ, brain and nerve, at the same time, you want to get in the kidneys. You want to take off, you deworm them, after, especially with they're older, like that. you want to deworm them and everything else. Get the fungus out of them because that, that affects memory. You know, and really go deep within the body and clean them out. I mean, you've got to detoxify them like you would detoxify a cancer patient. Or you would some, uh, someone with uh, fibromyalgia. Same thing. We only have two fluids that take care of the cells, and then everything else is the cells. And cells stay healthy as long as you can feed them and as long as you can remove their waste. Go back and think of, uh, of, of your children when you had them when they were infants. What if you fed them and you never cleaned them? Little problem? Big problem. And that's what you're seeing in the human body. It, when the kidneys are going down, they can't clean itself. The body can't remove these wastes. 
and it's the protein diets that are destroying the kidneys and bowels. People have to understand this. It's these high protein diets that are destroying the human being. And yet medical doctors walk right up to that and tell you to go on it every day. These guys are cuckoo. You cannot do high protein diets. And most of you guys have already proved that and seen that. If you want pain in your body, keep eating high proteins. You want to get away from proteins. You want to get away from starch. You want to get away from fats. You want amino acids, fatty acids, and simple sugars. And that's all found in fruits, berries, melons, and some veggies. That's the only way you're going to get anybody with Alzheimer's dementia, dementia up out of this. And you just have to treat them like an MS client, where you're 100% fruit, berries, and melons, and then you're going, you're moving their lymph. You're enhancing their endocrine glands. For the calcium, you're moving their lymph out of the cerebellum. You're, you're, you're cleaning all this. You're getting better blood flow to the eyes and to the brain. You're, you're enhancing the brain tissue itself by the brain and nerve too. Those are two formulas someone's going to be on for a while. You could increase dosages, absolutely, and play with it that way. But uh, the one in the nursing home will be the most challenging because you have to set up all this for them. But if it's your loved one, I'm just saying. Uh, I remember there was a, a, a wife of a gentleman, an elderly woman, and his son came in to me one day and said, uh, the mom was telling me that her husband was in a nursing home and hadn't spoken in two years. And he was just laying there, had a feeding tube in him. So I said, well, I said, you have to get the approval by the doc that you can work on your own husband, feed him the way you want. And he's got a feeding tube. That's perfect. So we just went the juices up him and we went, we went the herbs. And this was in July by Christmas. He was home talking and playing with his grandkids. That was a good one. I've seen so much of this, this is why I tell you guys, and it's not what I think, it's what I know, because you, you see it, and you see it all the time. For some, you have to work harder for it than others. That's a, that's, that's a given. It's just the way the stacks, the cards are. Uh, let me see here, acne and hair loss. Okay, so we're at the same thing, aren't we? We're at the same friggin' thing. Because the same thing that causes dementia and Alzheimer's is going to take off your friggin' hair. It's going to turn your hair. I mean, it's just, it's just the way it is. And baldness. So upper circuit brain and nerve are always involved in baldness. In, uh, in things like dandruff. What about dandruff? What about all these flakes that you're getting out of people's heads? Scary? That's your lymph system oozing out your skin because it can't go down like it should. So if you've got dandruff, you're on your way to Hellville. You back out of there. You get your lymph moving. That'll all clear up. And, uh, and so will your awareness, you know. I have been going bald, male pattern baldness, since, I was thir since he was 13. So he came out of mama with a heavy lymph system all the way upstairs. So this is how serious this is. I don't know, uh, uh, before which I used to have extremely thick hair. Now at the age of 20, 20. Holy crap! But I've said this before. Look all around you at the 20-year-olds. They're going bald. What does that tell you about the state of man's lymphatic system? <laughs> it's in living in Hellville. Absolutely. And thanks to you guys, you're helping so many people pull people away from Hellville to Wellville. I'm proud of every one of you. I'm telling you. No matter what, you just keep going, you know. Whatever little you can do to yourself or however much you can do yourself. You know, because it's you. You're the only one that has to pay the price. Notice that? Mm -hmm. So take care of yourself. You're the blessed one. And you take care of yourself. And then you got to love everyone else outside of that. But if you're not whole and real, then how are you going to love anyone else? Except for attachment or things that you want or the fear that you, you have. Then you find someone to, to, to replace that. It's like, no. No, you get strong in the self because there's no one but you that will be here. And remember, you can't go hide in a closet. You can't go hide from yourself because everywhere you go, there you are. All right. Now, uh, I am a Norwood 6, completely bald at the front, on top, and at the back of my head, as well as a thinning out of the side. Ooh, I don't like that. Now, no offense here. Uh, 
uh, Gerben, uh, Gerben, but I'll say this, uh, this leads to dementia and Alzheimer's. That, that's how serious I take balding and hair loss, is that it leads to dementia and Alzheimer's, because why? It's the same acids that are, that are taking off the hair, and breaking down the hair follicles, and, and breaking down the skin as it is that's breaking down the brain. So real serious stuff, real serious stuff. And they've he used several forms of all types of crap. But you know what? It's internal. And the best way to address this is the health of the hair follicles. How do you do that? You remove what's affecting them, what's breaking them down, what side of chemistry, acids, what fluid, lymph. You can't, you can't say acid and lymph and move it into the blood because you wouldn't even be here. So you're always at that system. And the proof is a dead, the proof is all of that. Uh, from the age of 12, I have also had extreme acne. For, see, right there, right there is the tie-in that ties the hair loss with the acids. Right there, your third kidney. Right there is backed up, my friend. And since you were 12, so you came out of mama that way. So guess whose lymph system is really bad? Mama. Mm-hmm. Take a picture of her eyes and your eyes. Take a look at your lymph systems. If taken antibiotics, skin cleansers, aloe vera, uh, skin scrubs, soaps, vitamins, and other medicines, but I still have it very bad on the upper part because it's something you can't treat. You can't treat. You can't treat any conditions, none of them. You can't treat rashes, ulcerations, acne, psoriasis. You can't treat these things. You can't treat Alzheimer's. You have to reverse how you created it. It's that simple. You have to reverse how you created it. Well, take a look at the daily uh, intake of your food sources. What are you eating? You know, man has to look no further than his dinner table. You know, his intake, his, 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 the way he lives. Your ingestion of chemistry is everything. Chemistry is chemistry. We are just told that certain, certain things are foods, like Pasteur, ultra pasteurized milk is a food. No, it's not. It's a plastic, plastic white stuff that, that only clogs the human body and causes tumors and everything else. We're taught that dead animal meat is food for Homo sapiens. It might be food for an omnivore, but it isn't food for a Homo sapien. And especially cooked. If you want to eat meat, eat it raw, guys. Just do not eat it cooked. When you cook, you bond and break apart chemistry. You have two things that take place. You destroy water soybeans and you bond oils. And then we eat that and wonder why we're not getting nutritious. And I'll eat more meat. I mean, there's nothing there to eat. It's dead cells, putrefacting cells in stagnant blood, which is putrefactive. And you've got tissue, which is just a bunch of amino acids stacked together with all the piss or the, sorry, the, uh, the uh, byproducts of cell waste, which is urine, uh, so we like that, and we call that healthy and good. <laughs> uh, and then the high amino acid content makes high nitrogen, which then breaks down uh, colon and kidneys. I mean, you just go after this over and over and over again. But it's some of those things you just got to really watch out. Man's got to get away from these foul, foul, what we call food sources. And start eating your foods alive and start cleaning out this body of, of everybody's. After coming across your videos, I want to use your regimen, but I am not sure which. Could you advise me which regimen? Well, I would go on the, uh, you know, just do on the 14-week protocol we have here. No-brainer. It takes off. It starts off uh, for two weeks. It starts to kill the worms and stuff. It starts to get moving. But I would definitely do upper circulation. I like brain and nerve with it because it will enhance your comprehension and everything else, but at least take upper circulation for, for four or five months and really start getting more blood activation up there. At the same time, you've got to clean up the bowels, you've got to get the kidneys filtering, and those kits are already designed to do that. Because I've laid out these protocols before, and, you know, we have a new video with them on there. We have a lot of, you know, ways to do protocols. Or uh, I think we charge 150 if I do your protocol. And uh, just send me in all the goopa that you got on yourself. Try to get me a, uh, a cell phone picture of your eyes. Like I said, it's on the YouTube how to do it. And I can write you up a protocol that you need. Uh, but 
Uh, keep it simple. You're after your lymph system. You want your kidneys to filter. You want your adrenals up to get that happening. You want to clean out your gut. You really want to get this lymph moving, and especially up in the uh, the skin of the head and the and the brain and all that, because all of that's involved. And so you fix all that up, man. You'll get your hair. I've made a lot of money through the years betting I can put hair on bowling balls. Matter of fact, for you Facebook people, if you can't get hair growth on a person, something's wrong. They're not doing the diet, or you've got some extreme lymphatic blockages upstairs because there's no one, as bald as it can be and as many years it can be, that you can't put hair growth on them. No one. So if you're not getting that, something's going on there that you're not getting. They're not doing the diet, like I said, or you want to get that upper circ. I like to bring the nerve with it, like I said. And then at the same time, you're pounding on the lymph. You're getting the kidneys to filter. You're, you're going after causative factors of why the, why the lymph system's backed up. Unfortunately, we live in our, or fortunately, either way, we live in our mom for nine months, and her lymph system is your lymph system. It's just that we exchange blood and lymph through mama. Hi, I have prostate cancer, which has spread to the pelvic area and spine, which can be done. Thank you, Mike. Mike, that's a little, that's quick. That's a quick for someone with such a problem, Mike. All right, Mike. I wake up to that. First of all, I'm on all fruits, berries, and melons, period. Don't even give me a salad. I'm on all fruits, berries, and melons, period. I'm also taking off on these kits. Or let me get you a protocol, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, they're gonna follow real close with the kits. What you want to focus on is the kidneys. The kidneys control the lymph system of the prostate, but also it's all through your spine and everything. Doesn't mean you're done, but it means you got to get your butt in gear and focus. You want to pee in jars? Take a look at your urine. Get your urine fil filtering. Uh, and I'll, I'll use the that we're not treating cancer. We're treating acidosis of the prostate that's breaking down the cells of the prostate. Cancer is a word medical doctors like to chew on for some reason. It, 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 it's an illusion. You're, you're, you're getting chewed on by your own acids. And it's not spreading. Cells aren't moving out of the prostate and then creating a, a, a spinal or, or hip uh, cancer. That, that's crazy. This is a systemic problem in you, Mike. It's just what we've been talking about. And you've got to really go after your lymph system. And I would mess around. Not if it's already metastasized. You didn't give me a PSA here. to give me some idea where you're at in that level? But when you have it in the pelvic area and in the lower back, you're up there. And it's time. You, you've got to really put the pedal to the metal. The diet's a radical change, but you ain't got nothing. You, I mean, they can't do a thing for you now because it's in the hip and the pelvic area. Any radiation or anything else will just make it spread even faster because it's burning more cells, and you're already burning up there. So you want to turn this around, get your kidneys filtering, get your adrenals up to get your steroids up. You want to get those kidneys filtering. The prostate is real close there to help pull that out quicker. Um, you know, I'm on two kidneys, two lymphatics for sure. I'm down that road. I want to clean up your bowels because the kidneys, bladder, bowels all connected right there. So you want to clean up your GI tract and really go after this. You might check your parathyroid and take a bones formula to kaboot. But this is a big lymphatic problem, and you want to tackle this ASAP. Unfortunately, you're probably not even going to get this for another week yet. But I, when a case is like this, guys, I, you either call the Facebook people or you call in here at this clinic, but you, gotta, you want to take care of this. And by the way, on the first video, or was it the second video, you guys on Facebook that are starting the psychological detox uh, I, I just, I, I've thought about this for so many years, and I thought, my God, you guys are, this is just what, I, I just see God working with all of you guys. This is amazing. I just, you know, you guys are the chosen ones, and it's the ones you guys have got to, you know, work this out, and you're just so good. I love this. Is psychosis, acidosis on top of imbalanced chemistry? Yeah. But if you look at imbalanced chemistry, what imbalances chemistry? Again, when you want balanced chemistry, you got to go to the fruits and berries, the melons, and the veggies. Because in a sense of balance, the chemistry is more balanced, of course. Uh, when we go into the, the dried beans, we go into the grains, and we go into the dead animal tissues. Uh, and, of course, no one can digest their milks after age three. And it, we shouldn't be sucking down on cow's milk. Get monkey milk or something. Coconut milk. But... You know, we just, uh, I lost my train of thought on that one. <laughs> but it's enough to say, though, uh, 
the adrenal glands is where, what, 24, 25 mineral corticosteroids are. And so when the adrenals are down, first of all, you're not going to be able to metabolize these minerals because your steroids are down that are used for that purpose. What's the other big deal here with imbalances of chemistry? What about the two, two essential factors before we get to utilization? We have digestion and we have absorption. Remember these four phases that your, your body has to go through to be at Wellville. The first one is obvious. You take down, you must break apart and, di and digest. So you have digestive enzymes that take care of this stuff, but you also have a wall to absorb through. You have villi or little expressions, a uh, ringed wall. So you, you have a bowel that's very absorptive like a sponge. Not so in carnivores, but in, in, in omnivores, more so in frugan herbivores. And uh, we have a lot of absorption going on. But if your lymph system, now when you look at the wall of your small bowel where most absorption of nutrients take place and the first part of the colon, particularly for micros, traces and the like, you've got a small bowel that's essential to keep healthy. But how do you keep a bowel healthy? Well, you can clean the bowel inside uh, with the uh, GI broom and with the stomach and bowel formulas and things like this. But what about in the wall? The wall that has to be absorbed through, what is there? The lymph system that takes the fats and the blood that takes other nutrients. So if the lymph is uh, backed up in that wall, it could swell and, and cause a, a somewhat of a malabsorption issue to the bloodstream and definitely a malabsorption issue to the lipids. So, uh, digestion and absorption are key factors to balancing minerals. Uh, the health of the endocrine glands, key in all psychosis or any other uh, bipolar schizophrenia, I don't care what they dub it with. These are names these guys give things, but really, the hormones and steroids control everything from moods to uh, all these things to your happiness. Remember the parathyroid is depression when it's down. You're not utilizing calcium, therefore the nervous system can suffer and can flip you down, especially with the adrenals, into the anxiety side, the emotional side. And from there you've got all the phobias, you've got all kinds of things, the breathing problems, the the uh, uh, asthma, so the, the COPD chain in other words. So uh, these are big deals. So you have to make healthy that which is in your human body body to bring about a chemical balance. And you have to stay away from foods that are out of chemical balance. Beans are out of chemical balance. Grains are out of chemical balance. Dead animals are out of chemical balance. And so is their pasteurized milks. You can't drink them raw anyway anymore. So get foods that are more chemically in balance and chemically harmonious with the homo sapien, which is your fruits and your berries and your melons. I don't care if you have salads and stuff like that, but if you want to detox and you've got some serious issues, get rid of the veggies for a while. You can come back and visit them anytime you want. But you want to get this lymph moving. This is the whole idea. You're in a detoxification process. You're not just trying to be healthy. You have to detox to get healthy. You can't just say, I'm going to eat good and be healthy. That don't get it. And a lot of you already know that. How many of you are writing in here that are already raw foodists or already, uh, you know, away from most of the, uh, um, you know, most of the vegetarian thinking? You're in the vegan areas and still having a lot of problems because you have to detox. You have to get into that body and fix it. And you can't just eat a bunch of raw foods and think that's going to do it. I used to think that. But I'll be, t I'll be truthful with you. The only way you can accomplish that is get rid of the vegetables and just live on fruits, berries, and melons for X amount of time. I like the herbs too because they're specific, they're cleansers, they're much more aggressive, they're non-hybrids, and they have all the power of the original creative thought, which makes them powerful. Now, thanks for this. Uh, who is this? Monica. Hey, Monica from South Australia. How you guys doing on there? Okay. A few Facebookers have started. Oh, yeah. I read this before. Yeah. I read this before. Yeah. And this is, uh, you know, this is just uh, getting, you don't have to get so much worry about 
chemical imbalances because as you bring this chemistry in, it'll start slowly hydrating interstitially, especially after you work on the kidneys a little bit more and get them filtering. Then you start getting interstitial hydration. As that begins to happen, you start to remove the more solidified mucus and stuff that's in the bowel wall. And that's when you start to see these shreds of mucus coming out of your stools. And everybody sees it. So when you start seeing more of this, you're getting better absorption, no question about it. And the liver can become full of mucus, the pancreas. So as you start removing and cleaning this sewer system up, all your organs and glands start perking up because you're giving reprieve to the cell and you're, you're giving that, that original consciousness we call energy uh, from the food that's specific for that area right into the body, which, which magnetically enhances that area, kind of like some of the thought on the glandulars. And, and of course, that then enhances cells. Because when you say what enhances cells, you could say energy and what breaks them down, a lack thereof. Now, when you get into energy, you can start breaking it down into chemistry and start getting more in duality. And then really seeing which side of chemistry is the gnarly, a corrosive side, which is the acid side. And then understand you've got to get on the more base side. But, you know, that's just eating fruits, berries, melons, and vegetables. They're already predominantly base. You don't need, it's a no-brainer. You don't even have to think about it. You know, this is so simple, it, it keeps you away from thinking so much. Thank you, because then I can be more aware. If I have to always think, then I lose my awareness into my thoughts. And that's what my life is, is nothing but thought streams trying to figure out and rationalize and compare and look at other thoughts and, and work this out. I can't see truth because of that. I can't see truth. I'm using propaganda. I'm using other people's thoughts and opinions and ideas to put together my own, but I'm using theirs, mixing with mine, trying to put it together with a puzzle, and we do that. But there's a time you just pull back from it all, and the answers are right there. You can see a lot more of the answers than you can think them. So I'm proud of you guys. And we talked about the voices before. Uh, I talked that on the last video and things like that, so I hope I've answered this. But thank you, Monica. But again, um, you know, voices and things like that, realize this is a spiritual renaissance as well. So people are going to start hearing things, seeing things, uh, things are more etheric. You guys in particular that are raising your consciousness up, you're going to start seeing beings coming to you. You're going to start getting uh, connected with your spiritual guides more consciously. Uh, you're going to start seeing a lot more good stuff. Real good stuff. Real good stuff. Getting out of this lower crap of all the suffering poor people are going through. But I am so proud of you guys, Monica, and you guys. I just, I just love all this. But remember, that, that you're, no matter what part of the body you're at, you still have to deal with the same issue. Blood, lymph, nerve. And blood, lymph is also the nerve. So blood and lymph deals with everything, literally, and then everything else is cells. So, whether cells are producing the steroids, the neurotransmitters, the serotonins, it doesn't matter. Hormones, it doesn't matter. It's the cell we want healthy, but it's only through the two fluids that we can accomplish that. You can't just make your cells healthy while, you're, while your sewer system is stagnant and highly acidic, which dominates the interstitial fluid around cells. It's just an oxymoron. That's just not going to happen. So by removing and hydrating and getting this, uh, these uh, cellular wastes moving out of the body in a timely manner like you would want your bathroom to flush properly every time, then you're going to get well from that. Well, I'll read one more and then I think we'll close this one off and see where we are. Let me see. Okay, uh, first of all, can I say it is an absolute pleasure for me to be lucky enough to be birthed on this planet? Oh, quit that. Matt. Love you, Matt. Thanks, Matt, for that. Uh, we're all here together, you know, and we're brought here together to work together to help get this done. And then we can go have a lot of fun. And we can have a lot of fun while we do it, too, can't we? Absolutely. We don't have to, we don't have to look at the negative side because we don't want a part of that. We represent the God side, the positive side. If we don't, who is? Neighbor? You know, you are, all of us are. You, Matt, me, all of us, Monica, all you guys are. You just, Karen, all you guys are just great beings. And you, you want to carry that. You know, even if you use the, 
a, a spiritual being as kind of your your uh, mentor in terms of how they hold themselves and uh, the honesty factor, the the uh, uh, all the factors that come in with proper uh, awareness and things and love for others, humility, things like that. Because once you get yourself and you're at home. There's no need to have ego or anything else because you don't need it. You're already home. It's to help others find or awaken or whatever they want on their journey. Maybe make your journey a little better. And you have fun while you're doing it because if you get trapped in other people's problems, you're trapped again. And these souls are making their own problems and they have to be aware of that. We can help them as way showers, but that's as far as you want to take it because you don't want to absorb, even if it's a loved one. Because they'll pull you right down with them, not knowing. And it's time that we stand as God people, representative of the light, the love, you know, humility, and the and the things that are of the the, the great side of life, instead of the the acid and the and the suffering and and all of this. We got to get away from that. Don't align ourselves with it, you know. First of all, as you remember that old saying: when the light comes on, the cockroaches run. <laughs> For, uh, I'm bad sometimes. I don't think I was sitting down here as a dove, but I love doves. I had a health food store one time, and I had a spiritual lady. We were out of body travels together, and she was working for me, and we were talking, and this beautiful white dove, and I had my, I was in a mall, kind of, and I had my door open. It was an outside mall you walk around. And I had my door open, and this beautiful white dove came and landed on the door and just stayed there for about a half hour, and I walked up and talking to it. It was amazing, beautiful. Then never where it came from. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. My friend Stacy has uh, PBC, primary biliary cirrhosis, all of the liver. So basically the condition destroys the bile tubes that uh, link the gut. Yeah, yuck is right. So the same thing here. You really want to get that colon cleaned up, and that will resonate into the branches. Of course, you're in liver and gallbladder formulas for sure, but you want to clean that gut up too. And to clean all that up, you got to get your kidneys and your adrenals going, right? So you got kidneys and adrenals and gut tissue to go after. You can use the liver gallbladder formula to help her with the uh, liver gallbladder problem, but still, it's that moving of that lymph because even these bile ducts and even these ducts, they all have uh, cells and spaces, guys, cells and fluids. Everything does, and the smaller, the more, <laughs> you know, and the more, the more uh, condensed, kind of like bone tissue and stuff. You're, 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 you're looking at smaller, smaller pathways still, and you can imagine these very small pathways how they can get blocked real easy. I'm surprised there's a lot, lot, a lot more bone cancer than there is myself. So you can pull her out of this and you'll want to because that sounds, that would be horrible. Be one thing to have it in the liver, but of the bile duct itself because you don't want to destroy your ducts. But like I said, the same issue exists in the ducts as the nerves, as, as, the, as the tissues themselves in terms of livers and pancreases and stuff like that. So yeah, you want to hit her straight away and I'd get moving on this because uh, lose a tube like a bile duct like that, I can't imagine, you know, I don't want to clip it and so what, but I don't know. I've advised her to get on a raw diet straight away. I would, and I would get on the fruits, berries, and melons. That, that takes all the pressure off the liver and the pancreas to digest foods, and it gives them a lot more energy, and, and it gives them a, a little bit of a rest at the same time. At the same time, it's very extracting on the lymph system, and of course, you're going to work with the kidneys to get her filtering and everything else. Watermelons eaten or juiced, all berries, grapefruit, etc., etc., and veggie by night. Will advise of the herbs too, of course. Not sure if uh, <clears throat> you have already answered any questions on this condition, but would love your advice. Well, P.S. Through your teaching inspiration, we have created a Facebook group for our local area in the U.K. Yes, Matt, go. Matt, you're a good man. Good man, Charlie Brown. I tell you, you guys are good. But this world needs each and every one of you. And each and every one of you can have a lot of fun and grow spiritually like giants with this. And just moving into a higher order of expression, you know, that's what's fun. You know, man's got to learn he can have fun. He doesn't have to kill each other. And But when you look at what people eat, you know, it's... Uh, 
it's bad. It's death. So we eat death, we think death, and we live death. We eat life, we live life, and we, we think life. But I'm just so proud of all of you guys. You're doing so well. This is just what it's meant to do. Helping the world get well. You guys are such spiritual giants. I'm a, it's a, always a pleasure. Keep a looking at your dreams because I do give lots of hugs. As you guys, some of you already know. You know, there's a lot of us working here, guys. Someday I'll bring you a, a lot of pictures of some of the masters and see if you recognize any of them working with you. Because don't make a mistake of thinking that all masters are males. That would be a big mistake that I made one time. No, no, no. There are some pretty far out female masters out there that are pretty powerful. One in particular, a warrior lady. Holy crap. But uh, there are some <laughs> giant spiritual beings. Love you all. May the blessings be. And till, till we meet again, which I uh, hope to come in, you know, maybe in another day. Uh, Chris is out all week, and I'm going to knock out a bunch more of these so I can get them knocked out as much as I can. Thank you all, and have a great, great evening and night and day. And, and uh, thanks for helping the world. You guys are, uh, are the best.